Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have the integral of one divided by nine times hyperbolic cosine of x divided by three times dx. And so how would you integrate this function? Well, first we're going to need a particular integration rule for the hyperbolic cosine function. And so here is that integral rule. We know that the integral of hyperbolic cosine of u du is equal to hyperbolic sine of u plus c. And so in order to integrate this function, we are most likely going to need to use u substitution because we have a function other than x within our hyperbolic cosine function, right? So the moment that you see that there's another function other than just x within that hyperbolic function, you are most likely going to want to set that inside function equal to u and use u substitution. And so the first thing I'm going to do is pull out this constant multiple to the outside of the integral. That'll just make it a little bit easier to work with. And so we'll have that this is equal to 1 9th times the integral of hyperbolic cosine of x divided by three times dx. And so then let's set u equal to that inside function. So we'll have that u is equal to x divided by three. And so remember, whenever you use u substitution, you need to make sure whatever you set equal to u, that function's derivative can be found within your integral. However, in this case, since it's just x to the first power and the derivative of x to the first power is just going to be equal to its coefficient, which will be a constant, we don't need to worry about that because the derivative doesn't involve any variables. And so if we continue on with our u substitution process, We'll take the derivative of u and we'll have that du dx is equal to that coefficient of this variable to the first power, which is one third, right? The derivative of x divided by three will be one third. And so then if we solve for du by multiplying both sides by dx, we will have du is equal to one third dx. And then whatever du is equal to, we wanna make sure that we can find that within our integral. However, in this case, I don't see a one third in our integral, but I do see dx right here. And so what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by three and that will cancel out this one third and we will have that three du is equal to dx. And so now we have a term of du that is equal to something that we can find in our integral. All right, and so we can rewrite this integral in terms of u and we'll have that it is equal to one ninth times the integral of hyperbolic cosine of u times three du, right? We replaced x divided by three with u because that's what we set it equal to. And we replaced dx with three du because that's what we found that that was equal to. And so now if I pull this three to the outside, we'll have three times one ninth, that will reduce to one third. And so this will be equal to one third times the integral of hyperbolic cosine of u times du. And so we now have an integral that matches up with our integration rule right here for the hyperbolic cosine function. And so we can say that this is equal to one third times hyperbolic sine of u plus c. And then we just have to replace u with what we set it equal to, which is x divided by three. And so if I erase u, we can replace that with x divided by three. And then we have the solution to this integral. Next, we wanna solve the integral of six times hyperbolic cosecant cubed of x times hyperbolic cotangent of x dx. And so how do you think we are going to solve this integral? Well, initially you might think we're going to want to use this integration rule because we have hyperbolic cosecant times hyperbolic cotangent, right? That's what we have in this integration rule. However, we have hyperbolic cosecant cubed of x. And so that doesn't really match up with this integration rule, right? Because this hyperbolic cosecant is not cubed. And so this integral is not going to be able to be integrated using this integration rule. And so instead, we are going to have to find another way to integrate this. And so what you have to do is ask yourself, what do you know about these two hyperbolic functions in terms of their derivatives? Because we're probably going to want to use u substitution here and whatever we set equal to u, we're going to want to find its derivative somewhere in this integral as well. And so let's start by looking at the hyperbolic cosecant function. We know that the derivative of the hyperbolic cosecant function is equal to negative hyperbolic cosecant times hyperbolic cotangent. And so if you look at our integral here, do you see these two functions within it? Well, I do see hyperbolic cosecant here and I do see hyperbolic cotangent here. And so what we can do here is rewrite this integral, right? This will be equal to that six on the outside times the integral of hyperbolic cosecant squared x times hyperbolic cosecant x 
times hyperbolic cotangent x dx, right? I just split up this hyperbolic cosecant function into two different hyperbolic cosecant functions, one that is squared and one that is to the first power so that if they were to be multiplied together, they would still be hyperbolic cosecant cubed, right? And so now what we have here is a function, hyperbolic cosecant, that we could replace with u and its derivative would be right here, right? The derivative of hyperbolic cosecant is equal to negative hyperbolic cosecant x times hyperbolic cotangent x. Now we can adjust for that negative later on, but the derivative of that function is in this integral. And so if we set u equal to hyperbolic cosecant x, then this would become u squared, right? Because this is hyperbolic cosecant squared x, and we're just setting u equal to hyperbolic cosecant, and so it would be u squared when we make that substitution. And then also du dx would be equal to negative hyperbolic cosecant x times hyperbolic cotangent x, and then if we solve for du by multiplying both sides by dx, we will have that du is equal to negative hyperbolic cosecant x times hyperbolic cotangent x times dx, right? And so then whatever du is equal to, we need to be able to find that within our integral. And so I see hyperbolic cosecant and hyperbolic cotangent and dx right here, but I don't see this negative. And so let's multiply both sides by negative one. And so this will become positive and du will become negative and then we will have a term of du that is equal to something that is in our integral. And so we can rewrite this in terms of u, and we will have that this is equal to six times the integral of u squared times negative du, right? So all we did here was replace hyperbolic cosecant with u, because that's what we set it equal to, and replaced its derivative with negative du, because that's what we found that that was equal to, okay? And so now if we pull this negative out to the front, we'll have that this is equal to negative six times the integral of u squared du. And now we have a fairly basic integral that we can integrate. We will just have to use the power rule for integration. And so if we clean up our work here, we will have that this is equal to negative six times u to the power of two plus one divided by two plus one plus c, right? The power rule of integration says you add one to the exponent and then divide by that new exponent and so our exponent would be three, and we'd also be dividing by three, but then if we replace u with what we set it equal to, hyperbolic cosecant of x, then we will have that this is equal to negative six times hyperbolic cosecant x cubed divided by three plus c, but then we have negative six divided by three, that would just be equal to negative two, and we can rewrite this to be hyperbolic cosecant cubed of x instead of this quantity notation, right? It would look like this up here instead. And so if we rewrite our answer, we will have that, that is equal to negative two times hyperbolic cosecant cubed of x plus c. And that will be the solution to this integral. Next, we have the integral of hyperbolic sine of x divided by one plus hyperbolic sine squared of x times dx. And so how do you think we are going to integrate this function? Well, initially this is going to look pretty impossible, right? We don't know any specific integration rules for hyperbolic sine divided by one plus hyperbolic sine squared. And we're not gonna be able to use u substitution by setting either of these functions equal to u because the derivative of hyperbolic sine is hyperbolic cosine, which isn't anywhere within this integral. And so we're kind of out of options here. We don't really know what to do unless we remember something about our hyperbolic functions. If you remember back to when we first learned about the hyperbolic functions, we briefly covered three hyperbolic identities for those functions. And one of those identities was that one is equal to hyperbolic cosine squared x minus hyperbolic sine squared of x. And so if we were to add hyperbolic sine squared x to both sides of this equation, we would have one plus hyperbolic sine squared x is equal to hyperbolic cosine squared x, right? And so what we see here is that one plus hyperbolic sine squared of x is equal to hyperbolic cosine squared x, and we have that function right up here, right? This is one plus hyperbolic sine squared of x, and so we could replace this with hyperbolic cosine squared x. And so let's do that. We'll rewrite the integral and have the integral of hyperbolic sine of x divided by hyperbolic cosine squared x, and then times dx. Right, and so now that we have rewritten this integral, we have a few different options of what we could do here. 
We could use u substitution if we wanted to and set u equal to hyperbolic cosine, but there's actually an easier method here that I want to show you. What we can do is rewrite this integral again to have the integral of one divided by hyperbolic cosine of x times hyperbolic sine of x divided by hyperbolic cosine of x dx, right? And so what's happening here is I split up this fraction into two fractions being multiplied together of one divided by hyperbolic cosine times hyperbolic sine divided by hyperbolic cosine, right? If we were to multiply these fractions together, we would still have this function right here. And so this is an equivalent integral to this integral here. But now why did I do this? Why did I rewrite this integral in this way? Well, if you also remember from when we introduced the hyperbolic functions, we know that these functions have similar identities to their trigonometric counterparts in that one divided by hyperbolic cosine is equal to hyperbolic secant, just like one divided by cosine is equal to the secant function. And in the same way, hyperbolic sine divided by hyperbolic cosine is equal to hyperbolic tangent, just like sine divided by cosine is equal to tangent. Right, and so if we clean up our work here, we can rewrite this integral again and have the integral of hyperbolic secant times hyperbolic tangent times dx. And now we have an integral of a function that we know how to integrate. We know that the integral of hyperbolic secant of u times hyperbolic tangent of u du is equal to negative hyperbolic secant of u plus c. And so now for this integral right here, we just have x within our functions. And so we don't need to worry about using u substitution. We can just integrate this directly into the hyperbolic secant function. And so we will have that this is equal to negative hyperbolic secant of x plus c. And so that is the solution to this integral. And so hopefully this example is helpful in showing you the importance of knowing your identities for your hyperbolic functions. They're going to make some of these integrals that look initially impossible a lot easier to solve. Next up, we have the integral of hyperbolic sine times hyperbolic cosine times dx. And so how do you think we are going to integrate this function? Well, we don't have an explicit integration rule for the integral of hyperbolic sine times hyperbolic cosine, but we can use u substitution here because if we set u equal to either of these functions, their derivative is also in this integral, right? The derivative of hyperbolic sine is hyperbolic cosine and the derivative of hyperbolic cosine is equal to hyperbolic sine, right? They are each other's derivatives. And so there's actually two different ways that you could go about solving this integral using u substitution. You could set u equal to hyperbolic sine or hyperbolic cosine. You would get two different answers, but they would both be correct antiderivatives for the function in this integral. And so no matter which answer you get, both are going to be correct. And I will show you both of them, but let's start by setting u equal to hyperbolic sine of x and see what happens. And so we'll take the derivative. We know that du dx will be equal to hyperbolic cosine of x which means that du will be equal to hyperbolic cosine of x times dx if we multiply both sides by dx, right? And so we have du is equal to hyperbolic cosine of x times dx, which we can find in our integral right here. And so we can use u substitution. We will rewrite this integral in terms of u and have that this is equal to the integral of u times du, right? We replaced hyperbolic sine with u because that's what we set it equal to. And we replaced hyperbolic cosine x times dx with du because that's what we found that that was equal to, right? And so now we have a basic integral that we can integrate using the power rule of integration. And so we'll have that that is equal to u to the power of one plus one divided by one plus one plus c. And that will be equal to u squared divided by two plus c, right? And so then we can finish the solution by replacing u with what we set it equal to, which was hyperbolic sine of x. And so this will be equal to hyperbolic sine squared of x divided by two plus c. And that would be the answer to this integral if we set u equal to hyperbolic sine. But what if we set it equal to hyperbolic cosine of x? Then that would mean that du dx is equal to hyperbolic sine of x and du would be equal to hyperbolic sine of x dx. This would still be the same integral that would result from this u substitution right? Because u would be replacing hyperbolic cosine of x because that's what we set it equal to. And du would be replacing hyperbolic sine times dx, which is what that is equal to. And so we would have the same integral right here, 
The only difference is that u would be replaced with hyperbolic cosine. And so we could also have the solution that this is equal to hyperbolic cosine squared x divided by two plus c. And that would be the second solution to this integral. Both are correct answers because both of them have the same derivative of hyperbolic sine times hyperbolic cosine. And so you could test that out if you wanted to. You could take the derivative of both of these functions. But in the end, both of these answers are correct. And so if you get either one of these solutions when solving this integral, you will be just fine. All right, so for our last example, we have the integral of e to the power of x times hyperbolic secant squared of e to the power of x dx. And so how do you think we are going to solve this integral? Well, right off the bat, I see that we have a function inside our hyperbolic function. And so we're probably going to want to set that function equal to u and use u substitution, especially because we know what the integral of hyperbolic secant squared is, right? We know that the integral of hyperbolic secant squared of u du is equal to the hyperbolic tangent function of u plus c. And so what would happen if we set u equal to e to the power of x? Would the derivative of that function be found within our integral, right? Because when you use u substitution, whatever you set equal to u, you also need to be able to find its derivative within your integral. And so what is the derivative of e to the power of x? Well, the derivative of e to the power of x is itself e to the power of x. And so I see e to the power of x right here within our integral and so I think u substitution, where we set u equal to e to the power of x, is going to work just fine here. And so let's try it out. We'll set u equal to e to the power of x, and then we'll take the derivative. So du dx will be equal to e to the power of x, the same function. And then we'll solve for du by multiplying both sides by dx, and we'll have that du is equal to e to the power of x times dx, right? And so let's just check to make sure what du is equal to can be found within our integral and I see e to the power of x here and dx here, and so we're good. We can rewrite this integral in terms of u. And so we will have that this is equal to the integral of hyperbolic secant squared of u times du, right? We replaced e to the power of x with u because that's what we set it equal to, and we replaced e to the power of x dx with du because that's what we found that that was equal to. And so now we have an integral that matches up with our integration rule here, and so we can integrate this into hyperbolic tangent of u plus c. And so we will have that this is equal to hyperbolic tangent of u plus c. And so now all we have to do to finish off this solution is to replace u with what we set it equal to, which is e to the power of x. And so we'll have that this is equal to hyperbolic tangent of e to the power of x plus c. And that will be our final solution to this integral. Okay, and so with that, that is all I had for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.